Welcome to Busted Speakers. I'm Kush. I'm Alex. I'm Cam. And today we're going to be reviewing AFI, the Blood Album. AFI are a punk rock, alternative rock group formed in 1991 in California, and this is their tenth studio album. So I mean, they're pretty they're pretty much veterans in the in the punk field. Well, I mean, they're, they're okay. I think this album was a, a bit of a, a snooze fest. Uh, I felt like most of the songs sounded the same. There wasn't very much differentiation, and I felt like the the, the lead vocalist was just very very tired the entire album i felt because like normally in their past albums he had some inflection in his voice and this one it just sounded like he was monotone the entire time and i just couldn't get over the fact that he sounded like he wanted to die a little bit (laughs) yeah i mean if they've been going around this long they definitely have a fan base and they definitely what type of songs to make but I was actually a bit surprised by this because whenever I hear about AFI, and this is the first time I heard them, even one song I've not heard before, it's always in a slightly negative context, like they've been bad for like over a decade. And is that really true? I mean, would they still be going like for over a decade past their peak if they still didn't have some like good material? Because I, f- I was surprised back. by this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, I was actually surprised by this, really. I mean, I actually kind of thought the vocalist still sounded kind of youthful. Like, not early 20s for pop punk, but, you know, maybe the same sort of youthfulness Billy Joe had on the American Idiot album. Still kind of young, but a bit jaded. Uh, I don't know. I get the feeling people get annoyed by the way the guy sings more than the talent range he has. Like, the, I don't know, he has a kind of annoying lilt. But I don't mind the vocals. They weren't the worst part for me. Yeah, what, um... I suppose I should start with my history with them. I pretty much don't have any. Um, <laughs> same. My, my knowledge of AFI pretty much begins and ends with Miss Murder, thanks to, you know, whatever Guitar Hero it was on. My brother was into him for a while, um, but I don't think I've ever heard a whole album. But, yeah, I'm, just, I'm always surprised to you know remember that they're from like the same scene as green day like they played gilman back in like the early 90s and just hearing how different they are and just like what they sound like now i can't imagine them like i mean you know green day weren't allowed to return back to gilman after a point because i mean obviously they weren't indie anymore but like they were they had trouble getting in because they were like too melodic back in 88 89 and now just hearing where they've gone and where AFI have gone, it's just like hard to believe that they have anything like close to the same roots. Um, but I did, I've, I have always had a general impression as uh, of AFI as being um, like very grim, very theatrical, kind of like um, MCR, but um, less, uh, I think MCR had a bit more um, post-hardcore in their early days, and then, like, their evolution was just weird, but, um, I don't really know what necessarily has influenced AFI, but this one, um, this album had, um, pretty clear roots in, uh, post-punk, and, um, for some reason, I got a lot of, uh, R.E.M. in some of the verses, which doesn't necessarily fit in the post-punk, like, if you want to you know, call anything, uh, like for, I don't know, maybe they did have a little bit of post-punk on some of their albums, but there's just, like, something... Their their earlier albums definitely did. Yeah, so I guess, like, kind of maybe murmur, um, in some of these songs, which kind of surprised me, because I figured that they, if they wanted to be post-punk, they would go a little harder for, uh, you know, you know, could name any of the post-punk yeah. grades like joy division or the here like they never got as um depressing or as not not really abrasive but you know just like joy division he as joy division they never got as um you know atmospheric and effectively moody as the cure did um so really it, it just kind of felt like um a generic post-punk or modern post-punk album but at the same time i 
don't really see a lot of post-punk being released these days, so at the same time, it was kind of boring and refreshing. I can't really explain it. Well, with post-punk, you do have post-punk revival, but then again, how much is that really just alternative rock? Yeah, it's yeah. the same. It's the same. Basically. Um, so for someone who's never tried this band like me, I was really kind of pleasantly surprised. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy that they probably have better material than this if I chose to listen to them. But yeah, this is definitely an album where the songs sound better alone, because I listened to some of my favourites alone. I'd say my favourite song was probably Pink Eyes, because it had a sort of unique chorus with dynamic harmony building, and it had some snappy guitars, because a lot of the guitar playing on this album I thought was kind of loose, yeah, in a way. I felt, like stuff, I felt like the album overall, the instrumentation was pretty generic and uninteresting. Uh, the, the songs I hated the most were... Uh, Get Hurt and Above the Bridge back to back uh, uh, Above the Bridge no. so, so Get Hurt I didn't like because he says I can't let you see me five, 536 times throughout the song and I some, some sometimes in songs like repetitive lyrics can work out but I think his keeping the same tone with the same lyrics gets boring and then you go to Above the Bridge and the instrumentation sounds the exact same as Get Hurt I, I, I was I was almost about to miss the fact that we switched tracks if I hadn't checked my actual like playlist going on. And that was just a really bad song with awful lyrics that was just overall forgettable in the album. But I mean there were some there were some highlights like uh, I like Snow Cats. I know that was one of the singles they put out. Uh, yeah. The the lyrics are meh, but I think it's diverse in terms of like the flow and the instrumentation. Uh, the lyrics well the like he's talking it's, it's an honest problem he's talking about like not feeling romantic with his lover and he, he's like there's kind of like a stalemate in the relationship but I've heard songs like that and they can put mu- be put much more elegantly he says and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote it it may not red enough in the bed enough that's an awful lyric that's just yeah that's dumb that's really bad and I think there are more eloquent ways to put it into a song I feel like he the, 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 the intention of the song was fine I feel like just him as a songwriter is just not the strong suit in this band but besides that they had songs like pink eyes which i liked uh yeah. the last song the guitar riffs uh, or well, it's called the wind that carries me away the guitar yeah. riffs are really old school i think they, they sounded more old school like 80s rock sort of thing and even yeah, his... that, yeah that one had like a funky bass line and that was like really different like that really woke me up i was not expecting that yeah and even like some of the vocals are stuck sung in the style of an older musicians i think like some like old 80s rock maybe hard rock bands but he still sounded kind of bored so it ruined it for me well the reason why you might have thought that sounded like a old 80s song is because i think some parts of the guitar riffs during the verse of that song it's like the main riff of i feel you by depeche mode i felt like yep that's so that, that might have go. been why there you go. And it had like a western style guitar kind of thing. Pretty good song though, I'd say. One yeah. of the better ones. And I think overall, I think when, when they when they do delve into more punk than alternative, I think they sound better like song like Still a Stranger and the vocals are uh they're shouted, not really scream, but they're just shouted like a like an anthem sort of thing. And the, the song had like had I think that was probably the most complex song on the album. Uh, they were a- always adding things and cutting things out and mixing things. And it was, a, it was a really catchy song. I feel like when they, when they go more into like the punk realm, they sound better. I think that's that's the sound. I think I think the alternative the alternative side is just very very boring, boring and generic. Yeah, I'll sign off on all of that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, the song "So Beneath You" had a more hard rocking riff, which distinguished it from most of the other songs instrumentally. And I just appreciate that because when you have a generic alternative album like this that has the same sort of melodic guitar for the most of the album you just get a fast-paced energetic riff like that song had and you know it's enough to make it a semi-highlight just one aspect um yeah so another we were talking about pink eyes earlier that was just a really good song it's probably my favorite uh i just think he put in a uh, like a singularly good vocal performance there is that like how early afi sounds like kush uh which song yeah he's pink eyes 
yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just seemed a bit more youthful and yeah. different sounding. Yeah, I think that's the uh, not. I think they're a little bit more like more punk in their earlier albums, but that's like the like the middle ground. Like they're, I guess you can put it in the, into like three three like eras. It's like the second era type music. They used to be a pretty aggressive. A- they used to be a pretty aggressive punk band, but I don't. I they just completely lost it into this more mild mannered sound. But is that second era like the most popular? Like yeah, the most that, that's when like light. sing the sing the sorrow came out in December Underground. Uh, I think sing the sorrow was a really well received album, but December Underground, the actual like heart, the fans of like old AFI didn't like it, but I think that was the most commercially successful band because like that's like where the song Miss Murder came and Miss Murder is like a, a classic anthem for AFI and that's like one of the probably the most popular song. Yeah. So are we gonna talk about uh, dumb kids? God. Yeah. Uh, was it was it the a different vocalist? This song. Sorry. Was it a different vocalist? Because I felt like it was a different vocalist that song. Uh, I have no idea. I thought it was the same guy because some of these songs are just like lead vocal and then slightly less or more melodic backing vocal, like call and response fin for the hooks. So I have no idea. I feel like it was him trying to like the same vocalist trying to put on a character or something. Yeah, because. I feel like he had the screams in that song and they were super muffled so like I couldn't even understand the lyrics and I tried searching up the lyrics and I couldn't I couldn't like I couldn't hear what I was reading and it didn't make any sense to me right uh, I, I had a lot of problems with this song well mainly only one the I don't know the main chorus line definitely rips off like a 90s or 2000s well that's I ri- initially thought it was a 90s or 2000s song and I have no idea but in my head it was like a mix between Ruby Tuesday by the Rolling Stones or Take On Me by Aha but then I also thought it might have been plagiarizing some Iron Maiden like choruses and that is just a complete world of s- different styles and it's probably not either of them but it's not even that much worse a song, but it's the fact that it sounds so familiar and plagiarized, I just can't get with it. It just annoys me that I can't think of what it is. And I know there isn't an unlimited amount of like vocal harmonies and melodies you can use, but I don't know, it just really reminded me of something and it's annoyed me that I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, that was probably one of the worst songs on here. I think besides that, the absolute worst song was um I, I really didn't like yeah get hurt across the bridge and hidden knives was was uh, obnoxiously boring for me not because it was like a bad song it was just as safe as you can get for an afi song just generic afi generic lyrics one thing that did piss me off was they rhymed the word crime with mind and he didn't like and he didn't try to like adjust the way he said it so it sounded like it sounded like the word crime and mind and they don't rhyme and it, it was an effort but it was just bad it was just th- lyrically they're not they're not good songwriters yeah but you don't really look for lyrics that much in like pop punk like this do you, I, do I, you? I normally don't but sometimes things just bug me like when when they get lazy and try instead of trying to write a third verse they just write they just repeat the chorus in a different tone and it gets I definitely think they did that with uh, Above the Bridge like that had a lot of repeating lyrics and I know it the song before it had as well but yeah most of yeah, the song, I just I think, never like it when that happens and it's not like I, I it, it can be done really well there, there are some instances where it is done well but this was not yeah. that case and I felt like there was a lot there's a AFI, I'm going to stick with them because I, I grew up listening to AFI. I really enjoyed them. And I think they have a few gems in here. But overall, it was just really lazily done. It's kind of it's kind of upsetting. Yeah. Uh, Alex, would you rate it? I'm going to give it a 5.5 because uh, I liked it more than I thought I would. And generally, the whole album sounds really good and is played pretty good. But the songs do get pretty generic together. There are some really good songs like Pink Eyes, and I thought the last song was pretty interesting. Uh, and a few of the singles as well, like Snow Cats. But um, yeah, I mean, if a song annoys me like Dumb Kids does, it's not going to get a perfectly positive rating. But you know, 5.5, pretty pleasantly surprised, you know. How about you, Cam? 
I'm gonna give it a six. Um, nothing really disappointed me. Nothing really jumped out as being great. But um, like I said, I um, do like hearing um, post-punk revival or something that sounds more influenced by some of the classic um, post-punk artists. Um, you know, just maybe I just don't seek it out often enough, but I also don't find it very often. So, um, and then another thing that. Um, one thing that did sit out to me is that there were actually a couple of guitar solos on this, and maybe I don't listen to enough rock, but it's just like, I don't expect guitar solos from most modern rock albums, so that was definitely a pleasant surprise. And it also wasn't enough to, like, turn me off to checking out anything that they do in the future or anything that they have done up to now. So I think I can settle on six. Yeah, so I, I give it a five. I definitely do think this is the worst of their albums, and I think... I mean, none of their albums are, like, going to be, like, classics or his historical pieces, but I think they have a good sound and an enjoyable sound. I think they just didn't utilize this, the sound that they have on this album. And I think that with a little bit of motivation and maybe some better songwriting, it could have been a much better thing than it was. But, yeah, a five, is, a five is not bad. It's about, like, half and half. There's a couple couple songs I liked and a couple songs I didn't like on here. So, uh, well, that's AFI for you. Uh, then if that's it then uh, thanks for tuning in to Busted Speakers uh, let us know how you feel about this album in the comments below make sure you like and subscribe to the video if you enjoyed what we did and check us out on social media